Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at a NAD 304 amplifier. So in terms of general specifications the amplifier provides RMS output of 35 watts into 8 ohms and what you have from the front fascia is a push button so you can select a secondary set of speakers so when you look from the rear you have four speaker terminals in total and then total harmonic distortion is 0.03% over the frequency range of 20 Hz to 20 kHz which for reference is the human hearing range and then for input sensitivity the amplifier can have a turntable connected so we refer to this via inbuilt circuit and that is rated at 2.5 millivolts and then for all of the other inputs which we refer to as the line inputs it's 165 millivolts it also supports a preamp output so that's level is 12 volts maximum and then just for your own information sometimes you can get these amplifiers come through the workshop or maybe uh, become a, available for sale on auction websites where the report is that there's no audio output from the rear of the amp and the reason for that if you look at the rear you find that there are two links which will select the preamp and then to the main amplifier and that's not uncommon on that amplifiers but just be aware of that if I disconnect it then what I'm able to do then is take maybe a NAD 304 and then connect the preamp output then to another power amplifier if I wish but commonly in terms of an integrated amplifier you would tend to find that the links would be left installed connecting preamp then to main and then for the headphones this is a quarter inch jack and this would normally be into a 6 ohms at 10 volts and then you also see on this amplifier something which is called soft clipping you have an LED indication from the front fascia just below the power LED <clears throat> and if you select it and switch it on it will then turn to amber to show that it's permanently engaged and then you can deselect it via the rear slide switch now just for reference because people may be listening and saying well this is a new terminology I'm not familiar with this um, what NAD have done here is they have uh, circuitry in there so if you didn't have it enabled and maybe you overdrew, you know, overdrive the amplifier or you had it high volume setting it could uh, result in distortion um, what NAD have done here is they have the soft clipping so once it's enabled it will attempt then to minimize the distortion if the amplifier is being driven hard or sometimes you may be playing some music through there and there's a part of the music which you know is much louder um, than the main track and again the soft clipping would uh, would take care of that and then in terms of dimensions it's 108 millimeters high by 420 millimeters wide with a depth overall of 320 millimeters and then input weight uh, sorry weight is 6.4 kilograms now for myself I've seen a lot of these amplifiers come through the workshop uh, over time and I do like the amplifier I think it's a nice build quality and also as well what it doesn't appear to suffer with is the plague of the C series where you have these JH electrolytic capacitors which always dry up over time and cause no end of issues for this amplifier different brand of capacitors are installed and really once the amplifier you know it, do, it does deliver good performance uh, but there is one issue which you will tend to see and that's the fault that I'm going to describe here so really what was the issue with the amplifier when it came into the workshop well the first thing and what I'm showing here is when you look at the front you can see that the power LED is red and it should normally be green probably after about three to five seconds once the amplifier is initialized and then the protection mode then is cleared and the relay will then change over to connect the audio output then to the rear connected speakers now I said to you that this is quite a regular thing which you see and that's very very true and um, what I'm showing in the video now is just an overview of the circuit diagram um, what I'm showing is just the left channel now what I'm going to draw your attention to are two resistors there is R333 and R334 and R334 is the white right channel and I'm indicating it with the arrow and now the value of these resistors is 47 kilo ohms at 0.5 watts or half a watt now if you see the amplifier in protection mode use this as your base reference so you can do other th measurements and then checks in your visual indication um, providing you don't see any burnt out components 
always check these two resistors and that was exactly what the fault was here and as I said I've seen this many times I also show in the video the measurement so you can see that the two resistors were removed from circuit but even in circuit one of the resistors was reading very very high in the order of mega ohms so I show both resistors for each channel removed one of them was within kind of specification you know slightly higher than 47 kilo ohms but still you know not outside of spec as such but the other one had gone very high in resistance which results then in the bias of the uh, stage and then you then see Q309 and Q let me just check here 311 so as soon as that resistor goes open circuit and effectively both those transistors are no longer biased or then turned on and then of course the protection system will, will see this as a potential high DC output and then will de-energize the protection relay and at the same time illuminate the LED to be red. So straightforward repair from that point of view it's just a case of removing the failed resistors and then replacing them. Um, you never see any discoloration so it's maybe not that these you know resistors just you know running warm as such you know you don't see anything under the board or anything like that but I do slightly increase them up to one watt resistors and these are shown and I slightly raise them from the board and say so they don't run hot but just best practice I've just raised them slightly and then as soon as the two resistors have been replaced then I can do an initial test and then sure enough there was no issue there the amplifier protection relay changed over and the power LED then went back to green. Now because I see a lot of these amplifiers there's other work which I then carry out and you'll be familiar with this if you listen to a number of my audio blogs. The next thing that I'll focus on is the speaker protection relay and I always replace it and um, what I've done in this video is I'm not only showing you the file resistors but I'm also showing you the speaker protection relay with the top cover off and then what I've done is I've just bent back the mechanical uh, or the, the contacts when the armature operates or well, the solenoid operates within the relay and then you have the mechanical changeover between the switching contact which we call the common and then the normally open contact you can see that this pitting and also oxidization on the switch contact now you may say well because you can remove the front the top cover off it you could have just cleaned that if you wanted to but because of this pitting it can lead to this intermittent loss of sound and also as well the oxidization becomes resistive so you may get maybe even like attenuation or even distortion on on one of the channels so i don't mess about i just simply remove that resistor sorry that relay and then i replace it then with a high quality gold plated contact switching relay and what that prevents is when the customer receives the amplifier you know they're not going to be played with a future issue or, or maybe an under, underlying issue which wouldn't have been picked up during the initial test phase so once that was done well what else do I pay attention to well the next thing that I'm going to look at and I'll show you I've vertically just placed the amplifier and then what I'm looking at is the solder side of the circuit board and what I'm scanning for there are dry solder joints so I'm looking at the input RCA sockets, also the speaker um, sockets or, or speaker terminals which will have its own board because I've referenced this before. This is because it's a mechanical loading on those contacts and I just need to reflow them to make sure that you know they're not breaking away from the board and everything was good. And then the other thing that I'm going to look at is the area in the small or lower voltage power supply where you have transistors which are mounted onto heat sinks and then also um, higher or higher wattage dropping resistors in their power supply and what you'll find is like a grayness around the solder connection and also some cracking so just spend your time just make sure that all those solder connections are all good of course clean them up if you've done you know quite a bit of soldering with some form of flux remover and when you do that work just verify that you haven't accidentally made any solder bridges or anything like that and then as I show in the video you can see the replacement resistors and then you can also see the blue speaker protection relay the new one in place and then I've also showed um, previously the existing relay which is the black relay uh, which has been there since you know the original manufacture there now because I was only replacing the 47 K ohm resistors and the speaker protection relay um, there is you know two alignment procedures inside the amplifier but 
you know I didn't really need to cover them as part of the repair you know I'm just check simply check the DC offset and you have two trimmers on the board and you can reference the service manual for that and you can make the adjustment but just get that down to near enough zero millivolts but you know when I did the measurement after this repair there were probably about 2.2 millivolts which is just negligible and then well within specification and then the same also then for the bias there was no requirement um, to do any adjustment on the bias for either of the channels and the amplifier ran under test you know very very well probably through about three or four hours completely fault free um, but before that sort of test phase just and I draw your attention then with this amplifier it doesn't have electronic switching so it's still mechanical switching but rather than using maybe a rotary type switch what you have are individual switches and they operate via a series of push buttons what I do is I go into there and then I will clean these switches to ensure that the contacts are free from any oxidization which again could cause lots of sound or maybe distortion and then after that then I apply a deoxid and then I also spray deoxid into the user controls so this is the volume balance treble and bass controls and then also the headphone socket as well I just verify that the solder connections are good and that the contacts are good as well uh, and then it just ensures that noise free operation and then as I said because the amplifier had been on test you know there wasn't any other underlying issues on there and really that sort of brings us to the conclusion for this repair tutorial so if you have any questions by all means email audio amplifier servicing at aol.com and I'll be very happy to come back to you and provide you with any guidance or assistance you may require uh, if you need to undertake any amplifiers and as always I really appreciate you stopping by and just spending the time just to listen to this repair tutorial so until the next time thank you and bye bye